Unrest in Ukraine this morning. Talks between Ukraine and a Russian delegation are taking place right now at the Belarus border. On Sunday, Ukraine's military carried out a drone strike on Russian BUK surface-to-air missile systems. You can see the destruction in the footage here. The attack took place about 62 miles from the Ukraine's capital of Kiev. While this is a small victory for Ukraine, there continues to be mass casualties as a result of all the violence. Ukraine's interior minister says 352 civilians' lives have been lost, at least 14 of which are children. Nearly 1,600 people have been injured, including 116 children. Americans are being told to leave Russia immediately and amid concerns that airline travel out of the country could become even more limited. The European Union is imposing a blanket ban on all Russian planes. This as Ukraine continues to battle the Russian forces looking to reach key Ukrainian cities. And those include Ukrainian capital Kyiv in the north, uh, Kharkiv in the northeast, and Kherson in the south. Ukrainian troops are resisting and fighting to hold all three. But there could be a new challenge as intelligence suggests that Belarus troops could be set to fight alongside Russia. In response to the war, the UN Security Council voted to send the Ukraine crisis to the UN General Assembly for a special emergency session. This amid a permanent member deadlock in the council after Russia vetoed a U.S. resolution condemning Moscow for the invasion. France also submitted a resolution calling for more humanitarian action and a ceasefire. Again, talks between Russia and the Ukraine delegations are happening right now at a venue near the Belarusian border. But President Zelensky says he doesn't expect there will be a resolution coming out of that meeting. Alexander Lukashenko звернувся до мене, щоб українська та російська делегації зустрілись на річці Прип'ять. Підкреслюю, без жодних умов. Скажу відверто, як завжди, я не дуже вірю в результат цієї зустрічі, але нехай спробують, щоб потім у жодного громадянина України не було жодного сумніву, що я, як президент, не намагався зупинити війну, коли був нехай і маленький, але все ж таки шанс. Ukrainian officials are accusing Russia of war crimes amid the invasion. On Sunday, Ukraine filed an application with the International Court of Justice pursuing proceedings against Russia for falsely claiming the acts of genocide have occurred in the non-separatist regions of the Donbass area. It, Ukraine is also accusing Russia of planning acts of genocide and says Russia is intentionally killing and inflicting serious injury on the Ukrainian people. But in the latest move, Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered his country's deterrence forces, which include nuclear arms, to be placed on high alert, saying the sanctions placed on Russia were unlawful. Well, joining us now with more on the situation and what it looks like in the, in the uh, Ukraine as it relates to national security is national security and military expert, Dr. Rebecca Grant. Dr. Grant, it is an honor to speak to you once again. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right, please, uh, could you update us on what we've missed overnight? I think the big story here is why hasn't Russia won yet? We are seeing some really significant frustration on the part of the Russian military forces. And what they are doing now is I think they're in a bit of an operational pause as they continue to fight in key locations. And I was very interested to see the drone footage that you showed because that reminds us again, here's the big thing. Russia does not control the air. Ukraine still has air defenses that are working. And that means Ukraine can fly the drones like the one that we saw and make the strikes on Russian vehicles. And to the Russian high commanders, that means, wow, they know their vehicles aren't safe on those roads and it really constrains their options. The fact that Ukraine, for, to use a boxing term, is still standing, why is that? I mean, the, the, I was told that the Russian army was so far superior and the numbers were so greater. Is it, what, is it go back to that adage, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog? 100 percent. And we, I think, have been astonished and thrilled to see how hard Ukraine is fighting back. A quick caveat, you know, Ukraine is still outnumbered and Russia does still have forces along the borders that they have not employed yet. But there's no denying it that the Ukrainian resistance is working right now. First of all, it's getting help from around the world, which is great to see. But back to the military terms, a couple things have gone wrong. It was a very complex plan by Russia. Their logistics resupply was uh, unclear at best. 
And then I think Putin expected a quick decapitation strike. He's launched about 350 missiles. But he he didn't really just time this right. It's not as easy as he thought it was to get that combination of air, missile strikes, spetnaz, all that going together to try to give him the win. His plan just hasn't worked. And finally, the fact that he's thinking of asking Belarus for help tells me that Russia is really flailing and they're in trouble. And, and the decision to go to high alert nuclear wise, what is that about? Yes, that caught my eye. Remember, Putin actually talked about doing a high nuclear alert back in 2014 when he annexed Crimea. He didn't do it then. He has done that alert order now. But here's the catch. The Pentagon is still reluctant to say that Putin is actually moving or making changes with the crews for those nuclear forces, you know, the bombers, the missiles, et cetera. So the alert order is there, and its purpose was to slap back at NATO. But we are not certain yet as to whether he's really actually maneuvering nuclear forces into place. And he'd be an idiot to try it. The, all the sanctions that we're hearing so much about and how effective they're going to be, I was wondering if you, kind of a two-part question. One, are we, are we kind of forcing Russia and China to become even closer with these sanctions in the West? And two, with our own economic woes here in the United States, how effective can these sanctions be, being that, you know, we have the inflation and or watching the, the price of gasoline rise seemingly by the hour? Could you, uh, are those two intertwined? Yes, and on China, remember, China agreed to buy a lot more Russian energy right before the invasion. But the end result of this, maybe for Russia, is they end up kind of a vassal state of China. They've got a really small economy. As to how it affects us here in the U.S., we see the uncertainty in the world energy markets, and of course that's raising our gas prices. There are a couple other commodities to worry about, too, down the road. Ukraine is a big exporter of wheat and of uh, sunflower seeds, very key in agriculture. So there will be some knock-on effects, and you know I'm, I'm concerned about that as well. But I'm glad to see the political resolve behind the sanctions and hopefully the specific bank targeting, denying Russian airline flights, things like that, that might really start to affect Putin's inner circle. And how about if we expand this to the macro level, looking, can we be so focused on what's going on on the border between Russia and Ukraine that we're gonna lose track of the other bad actors in the world, say in North Korea, China, some of our Middle East foes, will they become emboldened to, uh, while, the mice, while the cat's away, the mice will play? Yes, that's a big concern because this is going to overstretch our military. You know, we already are stretched pretty thin and we have to keep our eye on threats in the Pacific. North Korea fired off that possibly intermediate range test missile a couple days ago. And, you know, Iran is still plotting all their mischief. So, you know, at the least, this means that the U.S. will have to rearm and guard Europe to a, probably a greater degree than we were planning on. And no question, our military is gonna be stretched thin. We're gonna to need to make that up to them in our defense budget and our planning going forward. Well, Dr. Grant, thank you for make, making time for us. Uh, and uh, I bet we'll talk again as uh, this stretches out. I mean, every day it goes longer, it, it's, a, it's better for the Ukraine, right? You wanna make it a 15 round fight, correct? Stand with Ukraine, thank you very much. All right, Dr. Grant, until next time.